Hi guys, welcome back to another awesome science lesson. Don't forget to stop and pause as you need to. And also don't forget to go back and listen to parts that you may need to hear again. Please also write down questions you have if, if there's something in this presentation that's not clear to you so that when you're in class, you can ask me about it, okay? So this lesson is on air masses. So we are in our cycle one, which is human impact. And we have started out with scientific method, experimental design, layers of the atmosphere, air pressure. And we started to get into how air pressure affects different types of weather. We're now gonna get into it a little bit more detailed and talk about different kinds of air masses. So before we do that, we need to clear up um, the difference between weather and climate. So weather is always changing and weather is referring to the state of the atmosphere at any given time and place. So weather is over a big area and climate is based on observations of weather that have been collected over many years and helps describe a certain place or region. Air, so we're talking about air masses. In air, we started to talk about the characteristics of air when we got into the layers of the atmosphere. I'm gonna go over that again for you just to give you a little refresher. So air is a mixture, and for all you eighth graders reviewing for chemistry, remember a mixture is a physical, physical change. So mixtures does not mean they are chemically combined. So in air, there's a different, there's a mixture of different kinds of gases and different particles. The air that we breathe is primarily nitrogen, remember about 78% and oxygen. And again, nitrogen is the atmosphere. Here's just a visual for you so that you can see exactly how much nitrogen is in our air. And air is special because it can hold water and air can hold different amounts of water depending on the time and place. It can hold anywhere from 0% to 4% water vapor. Warm air can hold more water than cold air because there are more spaces between the molecules of warm air. Warm air is less dense than cold air and less dense things rise. So here's a good way to think about it. When you're cold, what do you do? You try to huddle into a smaller space to preserve your body heat. When you're hot, you don't want to be huddled up. You want to be having your arms out to allow any wind to hit parts of your body. Warm air and cold air are kind of the same way. You can use that example to help you remember that cold air and warm air are different in densities and therefore the amount of water vapor that they can hold. So because of this, a cloudy night is gonna be warmer than a clear night. And the reason is because the clouds act as the Earth's blanket. Clouds absorb, so they take in solar that is going back out to space. So they trap it, and therefore it keeps the temperatures warmer at the surface of the Earth. Okay, so now that we went into a little bit of background information, we can go into actual air masses and what they are. An air mass is literally just a big body of air. So a big, huge chunk of air. And in that huge chunk of air, there's similar temperatures and moisture characteristics. Air masses move. They form over large land or water masses and they move. Here's a diagram that shows you the different kinds of air masses. So we'll start up at the top and the middle. Uh, the top and the middle is very far north, and that's where you get the word Arctic from because it's a cold air mass and it's forming over land. So it has a C, which represents continental. If you go off to the top left and right, you'll notice that they both say MP, which is maritime polar. They're both in the northern part of the United States in Canada, and so they are cold, meaning polar, and they are near coasts, near bodies of water, and so they are maritime, because that's they're named from where they form. In the middle, there's CP, which is continental polar, and at the bottom, you can see there are two MTs, which are maritime tropical, meaning both of those form near water, and they are warmer. They're closer to the equator. The CT is continental tropical, and that means it is warm and has formed over land. 
So as air masses move, the characteristics of the air mass change. So it may have formed in a place that was maritime polar, but moved, and as it moved, it may turn into continental polar, or it might turn into continental tropical. So the movement of these air masses also contributes to the changing of the weather in the areas that the air mass is moved into. So if a maritime polar air mass moves in, it's going to bring very wet, cold air with it. So air masses, again, are named according to what the temperature and moisture is like in that area. Tropicals, always with a capital T, and that means that the air mass formed over a warm area and will be warm. Polar is always with a capital P, and the air mass formed over a cold area and will be cold. Continental and maritime are both symbolized with lowercase letters. And continental means that, that, that it formed over land, it formed over a continent, and it will be dry. And maritime means that it formed over water and will be moist. When you put them all together, this is what they look like. Continental polar, CP, which means dry and cool, because continental means dry and polar means cool. Continental tropical, C and T, means dry and warm. Remember, maritime means moist because it formed over water. And polar is cold and tropical is warm. Here's that same diagram, so you can look back over it again. Remember, these are named on where they are formed. It doesn't mean that they just stay there. It means that's where they form. And then these air masses can move, and as they move, the weather changes.